Hello, I'm going to record a quick video on conditional monitoring in a FANUC robotic program. Um, so many times in manufacturing, there is a way to run, um, uh, you want to notice and have some feedback and stop a program if something take, it happens. So for instance, if you look at my screen, say I have a robot that's doing a pick in place. And typically we go, if we pick it up, okay, we pick up a part, we usually have some type of sensor on that part to detect if it's there or not. And say in the process of moving it, something breaks and this part goes flying off into no man, uh, off in no man's land, or it jostles and falls off, or the um, the crazy cat woman from uh, the, the apartment up the way shows up and then steals it. I don't know. Um, we Would we want the robot to continue to do the, the job it has? No. So, what we can do is set up a conditional mo a conditional monitoring program that says when certain conditions or certain inputs or certain things are met, the robot will stop. It could be a PLC signal, it could be an input signal that's directly tied to the robot. It could be anything you want. And like to give you an idea of what this looks like, um, I have a job here where it's basically just going to call a circle program and a linear program again. This could be anything, but notice there's a monitor and, and a monitor end. You can put those in your program by just simply going to instruction and, and typically on like the third page, you can see this monitor end and, and monitor and you just have to highlight whatever you want. And when you do, so let me just see if I'm, well, let me make sure I'm at the end. Oh, I'm on that line, it won't matter. I can go here, monitor, monitor, and it will only bring up non-motion job, uh, it will bring up conditional jobs that you have set up. So in this case, part detect, okay? And so basically it'll run the first job and then once it calls that line, it'll call that other job to run in the background. And when the conditions of that goes true, it will stop based upon that job, it will run that job. In this case, it's a user alarm. So if I go into uh, select and I'm gonna go to type conditional, I have part detect, let me hit enter. And it says when DI6, this, if this monitors or whatever is on, call new job okay and this is a you could call anything here but since it's a non-motion job you may want to call another non-motion job um so i have a macro that's called new job that just basically is a u that just calls user alarm too so i can i can pull that up macro new job and it's going to call this job here user alarm two and if i if i run this job here you'll see part is and I can put whatever it is you know out or whatever and it just pauses the robot okay and allows you to reset things so um, I'm gonna go back into my job and how we would set this up was like we would normally do if I want to create a, a conditional job I can go in and um, type in whatever I want um, conditional job job one whatever hit enter but the big thing is go into detail and see the subtype here, you want to change this to conditional and watch what happens to this one right here. It automatically changes that to a star. Remember, this is what motion group is being utilized. So if it's a one, it's going to move the robot. The two could be a, um, another uh, motion group, uh, an, an, an actuary, uh, uh, auxiliary motion group, sorry, or something else that you can controlling. Um, but condition or, or no, not to it would be a one a one you know and so on and so forth for different motion groups um and but a condition here a conditional program would be be what we would set up and call on here's a comment and if i scroll down this might be where you want to ignore pauses naturally in the job so if if you want to make sure this job will keep running no matter if it's pause the program is paused or not you would turn this on so it would ignore any pause so that, so say you have a position here and the robot pauses to wait in a position, you may want to keep monitoring that. And so that keeps that conditional monitoring going even while the robot is paused or stopped. So just, just something to play with. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my, my little, my job, function and board off. So let me go to select, type, teach pendant program, and I'm, I call this pick in place. So. Here we go, I'm gonna run this job through just to show you it first and then it goes around and now around the outside. So it's fairly simple. So I'm gonna just to, 
I'm going to go do a double display and pull up my I.O. here. And I want, I'm want i on SEG, so, so I'm going to turn this on and watch what happens. The first job will run, but if it, so, so it doesn't matter what that input is right now because I'm not looking for it. So, but if I continue through, the minute it gets done with that job, goes to the next job, it calls that user alarm. But if I turn it off and go back here to function of board off, let me go back to, um, sorry, go back to end and hit forward. Typically, I'll clear, I will pick up right where I left off and call that job, okay? So that's how conditional monitoring work. And you can set these up and have a couple of different programs running. But the important thing is you need to turn on the monitor, turn off the monitor based upon the conditions you want. So if I go into here, and if I'm, I'm going to do this on, um, I'm going to turn off the teach pendant. And let's do this on um, play mode, for instance. Um, so I'm at cycle start, just so we see this in real time. So say it's doing my job. I'm in the circle on, boops, linear, stopped immediately. And you can then have a call a recovery job or go back to a safe position. These are things you do, but now that's off. I can go back here, hit reset and clear. And then where's my start up from scratch? So just hit it again. And well, in reality, we can just, and it starts, it'll start back up where, you know, but it's a little harder to do on the rubble guide. But there it goes. Um, so that's how you can do conditional monitoring. Um, again, you first you set the program up, then make sure you call it a conditional program. Okay. You put your, and the other thing I'll mention, uh, let me pull up a conditional program type condition. And let me go in here because enter. And let me do shift display single. Notice on under the instructions, all it does is bring up when, because it's not if, it's when this happens. So it's always going to be constantly monitoring these conditions. So that's the only thing you can place in a conditional program is a when command, not an if or anything else. So just keep that in mind. That was an important thing I forgot to mention. So, but everything else would call, basically you would work it just like you would any if command, just it's a when, not an if. All right, so if I do instruction when, what, uh, or you can do register, or digital IO, uh, digital output, digital input, robot output, you know, group inputs. Uh, you could have an error number that pops up, uh, you know, uh, that actually you know, or a parameter change. So there's tons of options that you can do with this and get, get crazy on um, an analog input. So feel free to play with that, but that's the basics of conditional monitoring. And one last thing that I forgot to mention, so Future Dan is adding this right now. Um, you place the you only place what you want between the monitors when you want to monitor it. So in our position, in our pick and place, once I put it down, I, I don't want to keep monitoring that input. So that's what I would put in the monitor end. So when you do this, you always want to have an on switch and an off switch between the times you really want to watch something. Because when, when my robot is moving and there's nothing there, I don't want to monitor input six here when I'm not supposed to have anything in my hand. So uh, an example is when I'm throwing away a, my, a soda can, I don't care if there's nothing in there. But if I there is something in there, I don't want to throw it away. So I'm monitoring the contents of that soda can so before I throw it away. So when you use... Uh, monitor start, only put it between the jobs that you wanted on or the condi or the time of the job that you want on. You can embed this in jobs so that you don't, so you don't have, I, I like the practice of non-motion job, non-motion stuff should be in a main job and motion commands to stay in jobs. It makes it more modular. You can call, do things, but keep in mind, if you start the monitor, you need to end the monitor if it's some if you want to run the job outside of a bounds. So it requires you to think ahead and make sure that you're only monitoring that input during certain times in the job where it requires. Okay. Um, so you can have and so have fun with that. And I thank you for your time.